My Bloody Valentine 3D is the remake of the original 1981 Canadian slasher movie, My Bloody Valentine. This one is a lot meaner and different, but not in a good way. Uh, at the beginning of the film, we get a sort of montage newspaper of Harry Warden, one of several miners who were stuck in a cave-in, and when they rescued them, Harry killed all of the other miners to conserve his own oxygen, but fell into a coma. When he wakes up, he massacres everyone in the hospital and several people, and finally gets killed by the police sheriff, and uh, almost kills a bunch of teenagers. And uh, ten years later, the, the, town, the town is kind of dying, and the survivor, Tom Hannigan, who uh, his father owned the mine, wishes to sell the mine, and it's sort of going to undermine all of the people that live there, including his old girlfriend who married uh, another friend of theirs named Axel. I forget her name, to be honest. It's probably Sarah or some generic white person name. It was... Yeah, it was Sarah. I was right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so someone starts brutally murdering people again, and everyone thinks it could be Harry Warden, but people are like, no, it's impossible. He died. He was shot. And Tom is basically deciding to change his mind and be sort of, not seduced, but he, he kind of feels like he's being led on by Sarah, so he wants to not sell the mine, stick around, find out who's murdering. There's some brutal kills in this movie. Uh, I didn't like the opening sequence because um, it's mainly just seeing the aftermath of Harry Warden. I, you know, I don't want to see the aftermath of slashing. I want to see slashing. So the beginning set piece has a couple of kills, but I don't like aftermath stuff. I wanted to see it all happen. They didn't show him also kill the people in the mine. So that's two sets of violence done off screen that I don't like. Uh, the, the, in the present day, the kills are pretty effective. There's a really brutal sequence where he goes to a motel, I believe, and he's just killing everyone in there, including a naked woman and a little person and a trucker. That, that was a really good set piece. But that movie kind of doesn't really keep up the momentum. They do the, they play along with the whole who's the killer thing kind of, and um, you know the ending's not very memorable. They leave it open for a sequel, but I didn't like the twists. Uh, there is a who's who of all these different people. You've got uh, Jensen Ackles, uh, and this was like I think late or early late two thousands when everyone was doing being in horror movie remakes. So Jason. Padalecki was also in like the Friday the 13th remake at the same time and one of them was all one or I don't know which one but one of them was also in House of Wax the remake so it's kind of like a thing where hey we're making a horror remake get in there there's also Kerr Smith I think he's from Final Destination he hasn't been doing much J Jamie King's in there she I, I don't I don't, I, don't, I don't really know her but you know the, the, there's some it was just a very mean, lame horror film. I do like a couple of the kills, but the first half of the movie is more entertaining than the second half. And once we find out the twists and everything, it's not as entertaining. Uh, you know, some of the, the it's very overly brutal, but the 3D effects don't. What's the word? They don't uh, age well because it's bad CGI, and they don't have like 3D version for home. So it was like a gimmick that didn't work because the movie has nothing else going for it. So this movie's not very good, and I give uh, My Bloody Valentine 3D a 3 out of 10.